Hello and welcome to X and Y Gaming Casually Competitive. And in today's video, we're going full emo Peter Parker because I've decided to share with you the uh, my take on the Cyber Dark Dragon deck, the budget deck build, whatever. All right, so we're gonna do this in the style of the casual duelist where I just show you the deck first and then we'll go into why I chose the what I did. So there's the Cyber Dark Keel, Horn and Edge, one of each. Three copies of Cannon, which is a great searcher. Three copies of Claw, two Attachment Cyburn, three copies of Cyber Dragon Core, one Napster, a Kaiju, and then two Cyber Dark Chimeras. Then for the spells we're running, yes really, three Power Bond, one Cyber Dark Impact, an Overload Fusion, Cyber Eternal, three Cyber Energy, three Cyber Dark Realm, three Cybernetic Horizon, and two Cyber Dark Inferno, followed by three Infinite Impermanence and two Cyber Dark Evasion. The extra deck is three Cyber Dark Dragons, three Cyber End Dragons, three Cyber Darkness Dragons, three Chimera Tech Dragons, and three Cyber Dark End Dragons. It's way too straightforward. There's you know, no real strategy on that one. The dark starts and ends with the Cyber Darks, and the original GX, whatever, uh, they were Cyber Dark Edge, Cyber Dark Horn, and Cyber Dark Keel. And these were the sacred dark versions of the Cyber Dragons, or whatever it was from the anime, and they combined their power with dragons from the graveyard. Uh, now, back in the day, they were not very good, and nowadays we have a lot more uh, better things to work with such as Cyber Dragon Cannon, Cyber, excuse me, Cyber Dark Cannon, Cyber Dark Claw, and Attachment Cyburn are your go-to uh, dragons in the deck that you would be attaching with their effects. Now, each of them all share the effect that when they're normal summoned, uh, actually it says if, but whatever, if the card is normal summoned, you target a level three or lower dragon monster in your graveyard and equip it to this card. It gains the attack of that original attack of that monster that's equipped to it by this effect. And also, uh, if the would uh, the Cyber Darks would be destroyed by battle, uh, you can destroy the card that was equipped to it instead. Also, they have their own unique effects. Cyber Dark Keel, if it destroys an opponent's monster, then it inflicts 300 damage. To the opponent, Cyber Dark Horn does piercing damage. And Cyber Dark Edge can attack directly, but then it has its attack. Uh, power have during damage calculation so pretty old school uh, edge can get around boards and horn is great for general damage keel is just kind of he's my favorite because he has a green border background whatever but this is the worst effect uh, cannon and claw both have relatively similar functions or general functionality I guess so they can both be discarded from your hand claw will search out a cyber dark spell trap whereas Cannon will search out a Cyber Dark monster. Uh, the, uh, they also attach, so by the way, when they attach, they gain their attack, so 800 plus 16 becomes 24. Pretty not bad. For just normal summoning a monster, you get 2400 attack. And so also, while they're equipped, they do something, and in the battle phase at the start of damage calculation, while equipped with Claw, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, and while equipped with Cannon, you can uh, send a monster from your main deck to your graveyard. So all sorts of setup there. It's fantastic. Uh, and then Attachment Cyburn does not have a search ability, but he can attach itself from either the field or the hand. And uh, when it's destroyed, oh, and also, I guess should also point out now, that if Cannon and Claw or Cyburn are sent to the graveyard while it was attached to a monster, they get an effect. Cannon draws a card. Claw will recycle a Cyber Dark from your graveyard back to your hand. It can even include itself, just FYI. An attachment Cyburn will special summon a Dragon or Machine Cyber Monster in your graveyard. So there's all sorts of synergy. There's all sorts of, uh, you know, plays that work together, etc. And it's just, it's fantastic seeing all these things work together. An attachment Cyburn, by the way, also has an effect that just inherently gives whatever it's equipped with 600 attack. So especially if you like say summon keel god forbid but then equip it with claw so now it's 2400 you equip it with cyburn now it's a 3000 just 
the one one regular, you know, usual no nothing Cyberduck monster 3K attack. As good as a blue eyes, baby. Uh, the G's do Kiru star destroying whatever kaiju. Just because, I mean, it's in there. It's a kaiju. Why would you not want to use it? You can pretty much run it over with almost anything. Cyber Dragon Core. Funny enough, it's the only Cyber Dragon. It's kind of why I said we go full emo Peter Parker today. Because we took all the Cyber Dragons out. Except these. Because they search on a normal summon. And that is fantastic. Cyber Dragon Napster is great. Because it can target... Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, let's be honest. You're only going to be able to target Chimera. But you can target Chimera and recycle them. Which, by the way, there's two of them. Now this card is fantastic, and I debated running it at three, but so far it's just so easy to get it out. There's no reason to draw three, things, so you can draw it faster. But if it's sent to the graveyard, you can send a Cyber Dark from your deck to the graveyard. That is a different name than the one that's already in there. So that's something to keep in mind. But more importantly, you can discard a Spell Trap to then add Power Bond from your deck to your hand. And then that power bond also gets an overload fusion effect where it can use monsters from your graveyard as well. In that case, they get banished and everything else just gets sent to the graveyard. But, I mean, my god, it's fantastic. And by the way, yes, if you were to just play the one uh, power bond and then you go ahead and draw into it at some point, at whatever, however, however, right? And then you try to use this to go into a full big play, you can't. So that's exactly why I run three power bonds. I personally think it's great. Maybe you want only two. I just want to be able to maximize the times that I can or chances that I can actually get the chimera effect off. So three power bond and if you don't know somehow this is a fusion like polymerization spell card but it also has the added benefit of doubling the monster's attack because it only, it only works for machine fusions. It doubles the monster's attack and then at the end of the turn Whatever it was doubled, like whatever amount, so it's, if it was like 4,000, then it gains 4,000 attack, and it's 8,000 attack, and at the end of the turn, you take 4,000 damage. Uh, it does not lose the attack boost afterwards, by the way. Fun fact. And it's great. I love Power Bond, especially when you combine it with Cyber Dark Chimera. It's extremely powerful. Cyber Dark Inferno is a spell card that I actually did run three of at one point. So this, as long as you have one of your cyber darks out and it's equipped with something they uh, can't be targeted by card effects and can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects either so it can only be destroyed by battle and if your opponent destroys this because this if this gets uh, under its owner's control is destroyed by opponent's card effect you get to add a polymerization spell or a fusion spell which is literally just to say a spell with the word fusion in it or a spell with the word polymerization in it that's uh, name text so you can do that which, it, the protection incentivizes this thing to be destroyed. Because otherwise your monsters are just going to be protected. Uh, or, or, or it'll get them to go after your other guys, like Cannon or Claw, which will get you a recycle or a draw. Which is pretty great. So, I like to run it at 2. It's very searchable. There's also Cyber Dark Realm. Oh, uh, alternatively, also, Cyber Dark Inferno lets you target one of your Cyber Darks. And then uh, return it to your hand, and then immediately after that effect, uh, you have the option to normal summon. So normally, as far as I know, you can only gain the optional ability of normal summoning once per turn. So like, you get one normal summon free per duel, uh, turn, just as the duels, that's the, the rules. And then, uh, I'm pretty sure it's also in the rules that if you were to say use the card double summon, or the effect of Gym Knight Seraphonite, oh, that's probably a lot harder to pull off nowadays, but... You know, if you do that, you can only gain, like, you wouldn't be able to use Seraphonite and also Double Summon. You can only gain the optional ability once per turn. Uh, either way, lets you uh, Normal Summon, and that's also what Cyber Dark Realm does. So when Cyber Dark Realm is activated, you can actually search out and add a Cyber Dark monster from your deck to your hand that specifically has a different name than ones that are already in the graveyard. So also, the next line, it says that Normal Summon a Cyber Dark monster... And it says immediately after this effect resolves uh, during your main phase. So I, I love that. It's also optional. It's just, that's part of the effect. The the one, if you activate it off of Cyber Dark Inferno, it's also optional. But if uh, activating it, activating the bounce is optional. Even if you activate the bounce, you don't have to normal summon. It's optional. Uh, but then this one, but it also says immediately after you can. Not just whenever you choose to, if you so desire. Uh, and Cyber Dark Realm, 
says you have to. Like, that's the effect. You activate, oh, I'm activating the normal summon effect. And they're like, okay, well, I don't do anything activate activating response. It's like, okay, well, then as soon as it resolves, I normal summon whatever Cyber Dark for my hand. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I like that. It's great. By the way, if you were to equip a monster from your graveyard by the effect of a Cyber Dark monster that was, you know, activated because it was normal or special summon, then you can equip it from your opponent's graveyard instead. Absolutely fun little versatile thing. Cybernetic Horizon is at three. I honestly really kind of felt like this should be at two because it's so damn searchable. But at the same time, you can just draw into it and then discard the extras for uh, Power Bond. So it's not that bad of a deal at three. But Cybernetic Horizon is a really great card. There's a lot that goes on when this card is activated and if it resolves. Uh, and even more importantly to keep in mind is uh, the wording. So you send two dragon and or machine cyber monsters with different attributes to the graveyard. So that's I, that's the first part. I guess besides the fact that the card, despite being the name Cybernetic Horizon, is always treated as a Cyber Dark card, but yeah, it's pretty great. So you send your dragons and or machines, it doesn't really matter the type if they're you know one or the other, but the attributes have to not match. It can't be two darks or two lights. It has to be a light from your deck and a dark from your hand or vice versa. Uh, and then you do that. Go on to then add one dragon or machine cyber monster from your deck to your hand and if you do, send a machine, specifically only machine, cyber fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. It's probably only those that exist, but still. So, a lot, again, a lot goes on. Two cards get sent to the graveyard, one from your deck, one from your hand. Then you get to move a card from your deck to your hand, and then move another card from your extra deck to the graveyard. That's, that's how it goes. So much goes on. You can only activate once per turn. Uh, and you can not special summon monsters from the extra deck for the, the turn that you activate this card, except machine monsters. Definitely not a problem in this deck. Again, so much that goes on in this deck, uh, in this card. Uh, and if your opponent is smart, they will negate it. And if you're lucky, you'll never get it negated. Uh, three Cyber Emergencies. I love this card just because I, there, there's like a recursion ability about if the activation of the card and its owner possession was negated by your opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can discard a card to then add the card back to your hand. Uh, you can only activate the Cyber Emergency once per turn. I don't really necessarily aim to use it for that. I, I don't think I even have. I think I might have done it once. Like, oh, that's a neat trick I can do. Uh, but nine times out of ten, this is just to search out a Cyber Core to then get out another spell. There's a lot of searching that goes on in this deck. There's a lot of uh, Solitaire-ish at times. Uh, Cyber Eternal. It's almost like a Monster Reborn for your extra deck fusion monsters, but... Only if they were a special summon. They're, the other option is to bounce it back into the extra deck or whatever. It's fine. It's recycling. But uh, the special summoning ability is ideal specifically only for if the fusion monster in, uh, in question was properly special summoned from the extra deck first. Uh, overload fusion. Only at one because you can only... Because it's only for dark machines. And, and then uh, while it's great having... Cyber Dark, they, they, these are all viable targets. They're really the only one that I, I, I would ever overload fusion out uh, is uh, in Dragon or or the bosses. Like, it, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm going to go through the Chimera Power Bond combo before I worry about overload fusion. This is just kind of like a second thought uh, way to get a second body on board that hopefully isn't Chimera Tech over Dragon uh, for reasons we'll get into soon. Cyber Dark Impact is honestly one of the better spell cards, although it, it really only functions for the less good Cyber Dark monster, extra deck monster. So, I, I mean, because, okay, so if they're in your field, hand, or graveyard, not the Banished Pile, but in the other ones, you can shuffle them back into your deck as the fusion uh, procedure. <laughs> And then, and then you get to fusion summon the Cyber Dark Dragon. I just like that. I, I really like that. I like the, you know, recycling ability. Keep them in the deck. And then there's more fodder for the other effects. I like it. I, I couldn't really bring myself to not play at least one. Uh, infinite and permanent at three. Especially if you get three structure decks to make this. There's no reason not to play three. It's honestly probably one of the best cards in the game. Uh, definitely can't be used in every deck, but... I mean, it's got Cyber Dragon Infinity, which, funnily enough, also wasn't included, but that's fine. Uh, and then Cyber Dark Invasion. I should guess, I guess I'll point out real quick, in case you don't know Infinite and Permanence, uh, the last line here, if you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. I feel personally it should be at the top. 
that should be like the first thing you read is that it's optional to activate it from your hand if you control no cards and then you go on to read that what it does is you target a face-up monster that your opponent controls to negate the effects until the end of the turn uh, then if it, additionally if the card was set before activating mean you didn't use the from the hand effect all other spell traps effects that are in this column are negated so it doesn't matter what column the monster you choose to negate is it only depends on where this was the column this was in when it was activated and only if it was set on the field first before being activated so you essentially get rewarded for using it as a trap card it just happens to have a handy little negate that can going second help you stop your opponent from doing certain actions uh, combos etc uh, and it's also not once per turn so if you happen to end up with multiple copies in your starting hand, and again, you're going second, so your opponent goes first, God forbid if you started with all three, then that's three things you can stop your opponent from doing in terms of monster effects. Uh, so if their combo relies heavily on monster effects, then hey, that's pretty good. Cyber Dark Invasion, I couldn't help but bring it to myself to... I, I tried just running one, because it's like, oh, you can search it out. But it's like, yeah, you could search it out, or you could just draw into it and get its effect off that way. So what it does is, you, is it's a once per turn effect, you can activate one of the following effects. It also goes on to say you can use each effect of Cyber Dark Invasion once per turn, but considering it already says once per turn, you can activate one of the effects. I, I, don't know, I feel like that's redundant, but, but whatever, that's fine, that's fine. So the first effect lets you target a Cyber Dark Effect monster that you control and equip a dragon or machine monster from either graveyard to it as an equip spell that specifically gives it 1600 attack so a thing to keep in mind is that even if you were to say choose attachment cyburn it would still give you the 600 from its own effect as well as the thousand from cyber dark invasion so you'd be equipping it with a 1600 boost uh and that was also to say by the way uh if you equip attachment cyburn to like say keel or horn or whatever by their uh, summon effects then you'll get the 1600 attack and then also 600 just by itself, which is pretty neat, I guess. You don't have to go through, you know, two two things, but you only get one thing for a 3000 attack boost, but then also uh, instead of two, but the, but then also you get two effects or t or, or, or two effects. Well, I, I want to know. It's fine. It's fine. I truly like it and also you can also send an equipped card that you control that's equipped to a machine monster to the graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls probably the best part about that is that when you send claw cannon or cyburn while they're equipped as per the effect you also get their effects that again cyburn lets you special summon a cyber monster that's machine or dragon from your graveyard cyber dark claw lets you recycle a cyber dark and then cyber dark cannon lets you just draw a card so, I mean, think about that. You activate Cyber Dark Invasion to send cannon that's equipped to Keel. And yeah, you're leaving Keel as an 800, which is, you know, it's kind of not shad of you. But at the same time, you're destroying one of your opponent's monsters and drawing a card. It's just, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, I love it. So now we're going to take a look at the extra deck that I guess we're just going to take a look at the five monsters. So right off the bat, the obvious plan of action is to summon cyber dark dragon and cyber end dragon and then fuse them together into cyber dark end dragon which is essentially just uh these two onto each other uh and i mean that's you know that's something it's definitely a lot easier to get only these two in the graveyard versus any five cyber dark monsters uh so here's the deal we have here we have the OG Cyber Dark Dragon, which consists of Horn, Keel, and Edge. Uh, and then we have the new Cyber Dark Dragon, now known as Cyber Darkness Dragon. Uh, two extra stars there, pretty nice. Uh, a thousand extra attack and defense, also pretty nice. But more importantly, uh, he's essentially just Horn, Edge, and Keel, but also with Claw uh, and Cannon. And I gotta admit, Cannon looks ready to go. So I, I really like the artwork. But the fact that you have to sink five monsters into it is arguably probably not that great when you can just sink two monsters uh, in, into a big, beefy, like, Megazord kind of monster. But I digress. This is also, I mean, this is exactly five things. So this is probably more Megazord than just the two-piecer. But 
so five dark it's any five cyber dark effect monsters extremely easy to pull out with this deck uh and as you do it with the power bond combo then it comes out at 4,000 attack you equip it with something like cyber end dragon or god forbid even a cyber dark end dragon and it comes out with 8,000 or 9,000 attack uh and then it has a free negate right off the bat so alternatively and actually well let's say you uh, equip it with cyber end dragon it comes out at 8,000 uh and you use this effect so by the way it has an effect i've kind of been ignoring it but it must first be fusion summoned and if the card is special summoned you can equip a dragon machine from your graveyard to it it gains the attack of the original attack of the equip monster that was equipped by the effect and more importantly when an opponent activates a card or effect as a quick effect you can send an equip card you control to the graveyard to negate the activation and if you do destroy that card that's not once per turn so let's say you have cyber darkness dragon out and you've got him equipped with something like cannon and also uh a cyburn attachment from your hand attachment cyburn excuse me from your hand like ignoring the fact that you have a negate already through cannon being attached by the effect or even cyber and dragon really it's probably better that way uh then you can just equip attachment cyber from your hand as not only a 600 attack boost because i mean that's you know never generally not that bad but as an additional free negate oh my god it's amazing then when you can cyber dark invasion monster back onto your cyber dark just to use it as a negation fodder Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Uh, you know, these two, they, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be these two. Uh, that's the boss monster. And then this guy, th this guy is actually something that's, it can be done. You can always just really easily, well, I easily verse. You can get this guy out and then Cyber Dark Invasion, this guy on, uh, or, or this guy, or this guy. Either which way you go, you can tribute them funnily enough for this guy uh and and personally when it comes down to either one i mean cyber dark and dragon's not that bad especially if you go the power bond route because he's going to be a ten thousand, but you'll also take five thousand whereas cyber darkness dragon you only take two thousand but he'll only be four thousand or eight thousand if you have an end dragon uh just okay we're going to take a tangent right here chimera tech over dragon it's the only cyber dragon fusion i got okay i guess not the only one this is like the definitive one, but Chimera Tech Over Dragon is a Cyber Dragon plus any one or more machine monsters. It's pretty generic, pretty great, pretty uh, pretty in gamey if you want. Also very generic and easy to pull out with this deck if you just can't bring yourself to, you know, go the extra steps for one of these guys, and you're just like, fuck it, I need some some big beefy beater to come in swinging hot. There you go. Well, that's this guy. He gets multiple attacks. 800 attack for each material. Whatever. Destroys everything on summon. Not that great. Whatever. So, Cyber Darkness Dragon is your negate. Cyber Dark End Dragon is the big, beefy boss monster that is attempting to bridge the gap uh, between the Cyber Dark Dragon and Cyber End Dragon. It just wants to just bring these two together and they can make love. Because from what I can tell... Cyber Dark End Dragon does not appear to have claw and cannon attached. Uh, it's probably for the best. So here we go. Let's just take a look. Let's. I mean, it's ultra rare. It's on the cover of the deck. It's got to be good. Cyber Dark Dragon and Cyber End Dragon. Again, as noted here. Uh, so it's five thousand attack, thirty eight hundred defense, and it must either be fusion summoned or special summoned by tributing a level ten or lower Cyber Dark Fusion monster equipped with Cyber and dragon which is why again you can get this out one way or another and then cyber dark invasion in that got uh horizoned out or you know clawed out who cares and then you contribute it for this guy if you don't only be five thousand or you can set up literally two monsters one with a spell card one with a claw attack uh and then power bond it out or even overload fusion it out because that's a viable target uh, and either way, and then it'll be 10,000, but I, just, I mean, well, not if you overload fusion, but I mean, you'll take 5,000 damage versus just 2,000, but I mean, okay, so, so 5,000 attack, two ways to bring it out. What else does it do? Well, it's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. And I can only imagine that if there's some sort of continuous effect that 
like a continuous trap card or whatever, like just like or or a monster effect, you know, that just is continuous all the time, then uh, that like uh, it says negate all your opponent's monsters effects are negated and also their attack is zero. It doesn't target. It's not being activated. It's just like oh well, this was this card was played and also it does this thing. That's probably it. And I'm just gonna leave that in because that makes a lot of sense. So once per turn. You can equip one monster from either graveyard to this card. Uh, and then this card can attack a number of times each battle phase up to the number of equipped cards attached to it. So it doesn't inherently get an attack gain from its attachment. Actually, it doesn't even get anything attached on summon. It just comes out a big beefy beater with 5,000 attack and some general protection. But the fact that it can attack... Okay, so you can equip something from your graveyard or your opponents if you want to you know, screw your opponent out of a graveyard access or whatever. Uh, and then Cyberdark Invasion, another one onto it. And then even Attachment Cyburn one from your hand for another one. And it has three attacks it can make and anywhere between five to 10,000 attack. And I swear, if you can't OTK someone by summoning at least one of these two things, especially this big beefy boy, then you're doing something wrong. Or you're playing modern meta. I don't know which one. And that is going to do it for my full emo Peter Parker look at the Cyber Darkness Dragon budget deck profile. Because I absolutely loved these things when they came out. Uh, you know, just in the anime. I thought, oh, it's so cool. It's, oh, it's absorbing the red eyes. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, you know, it's pretty neat. And uh, they did not work well together at all. They were not very good cards. They're way better than they used to be and are actually a workable, viable deck. Uh, you know, I'm even able to manage to throw in some Cyber Dragons in here that actually, uh, on rare occasions, do see the occasional Cyber End Dragon being legitimately fusion summoned. So that, you know, it feels pretty cool. I, I do like it. Maybe it's a little niche that Napster can only target Chimera and there's no other Cyber Dragon. But the fact that Cyber Dragon actual like the actual cyber dragon by itself the only thing it does is special summon itself i just i couldn't do it i couldn't i thought i mean i don't even have Cameratech overfleet you know what i mean so uh yeah that's it that's the deck by the way this deck is available uh for sale there's some uh field centers in there interesting and then this deck goes in here there's one two uh, Sacred Beast, which I don't, I don't think I've done an actual profile for yet, funnily enough. And three, Master Will 5 decks. This one is Shadal's. I do have a... I do have... I, I have that one. Link in the description. Uh, there you go. But wait, there's more! Because those are also uh, ten Speed Duel decks. That's actually, no joke, five Speed Duel decks per box with, you know, some whatever extra cards in there. Uh... Or is it this one that has the extra cards? I don't know. They're in there. It's ten. An extra. There's the extra ones. Just a bunch of extra ones. Uh, and sleeves. And then not one. Not even two. But three whole boxes of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, both Speed Duels and Master Rule 5 cards. And you're not, just, you're not just one or the other. And I ended up getting... What was it? The Shadal deck. And the Sacred Beast deck. And Dual Devastator. And that was, uh, I, I mixed together uh, two Master Rule 5 decks, and this one is just strictly budget build. Uh, but yeah, the entire collection is being sold in its entirety for $300. Uh, link in the description, I guess, to my Discord, and also probably the general rules of how it'll happen. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just shoot me an email. Uh, let me know you're interested. Figure out where I'm sending it. Uh, and then you pay me and then I mail them and give you a tracking number that will literally let you follow your card's journey every single step of the way as per the USPS system. There you go. That's that's the video. That's the profile. All of this still is still for sale. Link in the video to the original video uh, and all the cards because I, I, I trimmed down the 15 speed dual decks to only 10. Uh, the cards are still in here. Like, all the Speed Duel cards are still here. I just trimmed them down and streamlined them to 10 select decks. Uh, and there you go. So that's that, and thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, 
or whatever for more Yu-Gi-Oh content and Minecraft. Okay, great. Thank you.